Still alive, I see. Something tells me that I saw on the horizon is your doing. How'd you manage that? It's a long story. One that I'd rather only tell once. Right. All hands on deck, then. I'm sure you've all guessed. The crystal which now commands the eastern skies was summoned by Ultima. He called it Origin. Though the significance of that name is as yet unclear. What does it matter what it's called? Its emergence tore Twinside asunder and wiped my homeland from the map. Mention of the Dominion Spires can be found in the oldest of Valisthian records. But to the best of my knowledge, none provide any hint as to their true nature. That they would prove the horns of some slumbering demon. Well, the Dominion's demise was at least quick. Elsewhere, the Republican army cannot hope to contain the chaos engulfing Randalar. Canva is in flames, and the Empire... Our allies are crying out for answers. I've said the curse break is to give them what assurances we can, but right now that amounts to fuck all. They wouldn't be able to stop what the skies have started in any case. People here and across the realm grow sicker with every passing day. Could it be that this new Mother Crystal is like the others? That it draws upon the land's ether? It certainly looked that way, from stone here. If that were true, it would explain the hastening spread of the Blight since the Crystal's appearance. Would it not? And as the land's ether slowly rises to the surface, it pulls. Corrupting all who cannot channel its energies. Arche above. Ether floods below, and in the middle, here we languish, hopelessly entrapped. <laughs> it's all right. When we faced him at Stone here, Ultima told us his true power quickens in the Halls of Origin. Needless to say, we cannot allow that to continue. If we are to stop him, we will have to find a way into the crystal. How are we going to manage that then? It's up in the sky. And fast as she is, the Enterprise can't fly. <laughs> it's a lot to take in, and I reckon we'd all benefit from some time to clear our heads. The answer will come to us. Don't you worry. Ain't that right, Clive? Right. That's right. Well, go on, then. Bugger off. Same goes for you, Clive. You won't solve anything like this. Trust me. Go and get some fresh air, right? Thank you. Joshua seemed upset. Unless you've taught our chocobos how to fly, I won't be scouting this one for you, Clive. You're on your own, but not alone. Always one more job to do, isn't there, Clive? There is much to consider.
consider. Believe me, Clive, I would fly with you to origin, nay, to the end of the world, if I could. Alas, my fear of heights prevents me. Good morrow to you, my friend. I don't believe you've read this particular chapter before. What subject shall we consider today? The door to the shelves shall ever be open. They will. It's just a big crystal. How hard could it be? You be careful up there. If you happen to snag your britches on anything, be sure to bring them back to me. I'll get them patched up right away. Inside's hundreds of leagues away. That'd mean the crystal is massive. Take as long as you need, Clive. Just don't take too long, eh? Clive. What is it that you wish to learn? Study it well, Clive. Of course. Thus ends today's lesson. You nearly collapsed back there. It's just a touch of the vapors. Until the skies have cleared, more and more will fall to its curse. I will do what I can, but... Anything to follow you up there to that crystal. Give me a few more years and I might even be able to take you there myself. Do you think Sid will tell us about his adventures in Ash? I doubt it. I heard he's leaving again. Well then maybe when he gets back. When you return, would you mind teaching the children another lesson? They did so enjoy your last. Miss Shirley says your books made quite an impression on the children. You've inspired them all to become writers themselves. <laughs> Is that so? We'll need to find some more parchment then. You will, Lady Karen. Is
First the skies, then the crystal. Ultima may have created us, but he doesn't make us who we are. Only we can do that. And if he would have us fight for our survival, so be it. It's what we've been doing all along. Much like Ultima himself, it would seem. His new world being naught but a means to survive. And so, we must contend to decide which of us shall inherit the land. Should Ultima prevail, it will mean death for us all. Of that, we can be certain. But even should he fail, what world awaits us? A withered, godless place, where our newfound freedom will most like prove a chain in itself. Well, that may be, but a chain can always be broken. As long as one has the will to break it, it won't be easy. It may take generations, centuries of suffering. And that is if everyone plays their part. But it will happen. And when it does, it will be on our terms. That is the world that awaits us. <laughs> Indeed. And what better world could one wish for? But first, we have to reach that crystal. Then it's a good thing I have wings. You can barely stand, let alone fly. And only the Founder knows what horrors await in those skies. Are you certain about this? Am I certain? I am the Phoenix. I will do what I must. This is our fight. Remember? All right. I yield. But only what you must, yes? I am still your sworn shield. That you are. And what of my wings? Lest you forget, you go to stand against a god. I would not have you succumb to fatigue before the fight begins. Ifrit. Your brother mentioned that some few of the Dominants who had lost their power to you were still able to prime. Is that true? It is. But their icons no longer submitted to their will. Ah. Then mine will have to be stronger. That you both might save your strength for the battle to come. You don't have to do this. If you do, there's a chance you might lose all you have left. And what have I but regret? My life ended in the Dominion. I fear death no more. Besides, I would have words with Ultima. He has much to answer for. We are in your debt, Dion. We can speak of debts when this is over.
He speaks like a man who knows he's not coming back. And has come to terms with that. That doesn't mean that we have to, does it, Clive? Time to talk to Jill. I only hope she understands. Take as much time as you need, brother. Something tells me Ultima will wait. Say your farewells, and let us be gone. Unless you've taught our chocobos how to fly, I won't be scouting this one for you, Clive. You're on your own, but not alone. Still alive, are you? Coin purse weighing you down. It'd better all be here. You're rubbing me blind, you know. I will not forget this kindness, my lord. I shall go to this. But as soon as the rebuilding happens. to wish on a star. <sighs> that might not be such a bad idea. This is it, Jill. You know what I have to do. Why I have to do it. There's no turning back now. This is where our journey was leading us. Where it will end. For better or worse. I could pray to Metia for you. But you'll be all right, won't you, Clive? You always are. I did promise we'd watch the road together. I'll be waiting. Do you have a moment? Of course. Always. I wanted to give you something. Is this? I stitched it from the cloth you gave Hortense. The beast she said you liked best. I told her I used to enjoy needlework, but I didn't think she'd remember. It's beautiful, Jill. You didn't have to. When I was very little, I recall my mother telling me that young ladies of the court would give knights ribbons from their hair before they went off to war. I still wear mine, so I made you this instead. Black is the color of eternity. It cannot be stained. It cannot be sullied. It is unchanging, unwavering, just like your resolve. And mine. Our resolve. May it never diminish. And may it ever bring you back to me. I will always, always be here. Thank you, Jill. What is it, Clive? You can always somewhere in the back of my mind. I know. Thank you. And so for now...
right. What is it this time, Torgal? Something tells me this is no mere adventure story. As for down here... Clive, my boy! Rutherford informs me that we owe you our thanks. Hadn't intended for you to get involved, but such are the times we live in, huh? I would have done the same for anyone else. You're far too modest, Clive. You'd make a terrible nobleman. But tell me... Is the realm truly in as dire a state as Rutherford suggests? From what little I saw, you were right to be worried. Uh, I suppose I should have expected the worst. But I was rather hoping the great and good of the realm might have things a little more under control. Alas, it seems that firm leadership is in short supply these days, and without it, the people are bound to lose their way. We must move quickly. But where do we start? True, the challenges that face us are many. But in my estimation, there are two key areas to be addressed before any other. The realm's armies and her larders. As you've seen firsthand, it's every man and woman for themselves out there. Certain cities have banded together to try and maintain some semblance of order, yes? But such cases are few and far between. And yet, the only remedy for the chaos that faces us is unity. A unity that transcends even the borders laid down by our ancestors. In short, if Storm does not stand together, she will fall apart. But how would one even begin to unite the realm? The armies, my boy. As I told you already, we begin by restoring order among the ranks of those sworn to maintain it. Sadly, I doubt I could convince even the lowliest gaggle of privates to dig a latrine together. But I do know someone the High Commanders have been known to listen to on occasion. 
Field Marshal Eugen Havel. I thought he was retired. He was, until an Akashic army tore through Randalar and killed most of the rank and file. There is no man alive more capable. Literally. And as luck would have it, I've already spoken with him on the matter. Of course you have. And he's agreed to help. On one condition. That he first speaks with you personally. Havel has always been a man of frustratingly rigid principle. And he has certain qualms about clasping arms with... Well, with an outlaw. I extolled your many virtues as best I could, of course. But the old goat was adamant that he be allowed to appraise you in person. You don't mind, do you, my boy? Of course not. As long as chaos reigns, we will never build a better world. I'll do whatever it takes. And if the Field Marshal wishes to speak with me in person, then so be it. That's the spirit. I'll leave for Randalar at once. Would you send a Stolas? Of course. Rutherford is already in the Dalmechian capital. I'll have him tell Havel to expect you forthwith. Excellent. Thank you, Uncle. No. Thank you, Clive. Don't worry, my boy. Rutherford is in Randalar this very moment, singing your praises to all and sundry. They'll adore you. On me. Be careful out there. So what do I owe the honor? Crack the crystal. Not a very good one. But then. Do this too. Take care. I did it, Sid. I made friends with all the animals in the hideaway. Say what you will. Friends seen ourselves. Pining for something, boy. What is it? What do you see out there? I never did ask where you got that anklet of yours. From Sade, that's why. On the day I brought him home. That long ago? And you're only thinking to ask this now? Sid saw that the pup had a habit of gnawing on his leg, since you ask. Clap that there iron on him to keep him from doing it. What was wrong, boy? I'll take like as not. Must have been hard on the poor whelp losing his loving masters at such a young age. Doubly hard in being a frost wolf, torn away from his icons and all. Sid would always tell him, you want my iron gone? You find what it is you're looking for. I reckon what he was looking for was you. I'm sorry, Toggle. 
Sorry for making you wait so long. Let's get that thing off you. Doesn't sound like he wants it off. Indeed. You miss it as much as the rest of us, don't you? You want me to go with you somewhere? Quick, aren't you? Glad you've been paying attention. Not nearly as much as you have, Lady Karen. Aye, good thing and all. It's not like Gav would have kept him in nuts and rubbed his belly these past ten summers. Your kindness is appreciated. You've been a good friend to him. Only because he doesn't talk back like the rest of you. Go on now. Where to then, Toggle? happened to Miss Mid at all. I heard she was kicked out of the university. Sid, you have to help us. With what? You didn't take apart another of Mid's contraptions, did you? No. Well, yes. But that's not what we want to talk to you about. It's Miss Mid at all. She's been acting strange. Very strange. She's barely ever around. When she is, she acts like we aren't even there. Her head's in a crowd. In the clouds. And that's what I said. In the clouds. Well, she does have a lot on her mind. When did you last see her? Um, not long ago. Ah, right after she got back from saving you from Stone Ear. Then it's probably just about the Enterprise. It did take quite a battering on the way there and back. You didn't break it, did you, Sid? You really should be more careful around Miss Mididol's inventions. Oh, don't listen to her. Even if you did break the Enterprise, you could put it back together, couldn't you? But who's gonna put Miss Mididol back together? She seems really sad. Why don't I go and see if I can cheer her up? You do that! For us! She's in her dungeon. Don't scare him. It's not a real dungeon. Thanks for the warning. Shirley says we're not allowed in the dungeon. But Miss Mididol doesn't mind. Has Mididol mentioned a new project yet? I will not let them be forgotten. Sid, may I have a moment? Of course. It is an honor to finally speak with you. My name is Herman. I've been with the Curse Breakers for some time now. And uh, I wish to be deployed to Ash. Any assignment will do. No. The lands across the Narrow are too dangerous. I will not send good men and women to risk their lives needlessly. Why would you want to go back? I need to retrieve something. Something important. I was raised in an orphanage. The Badbach 
conservatory. Or rather, I was held captive there. It was not a place of nurture. It existed solely to turn bearer children into mindless weapons. We were tortured until we feared no pain. Tormented until our hearts turned to stone. And few ever survived long enough to become tools of the last king. I can't imagine. I lost so many. I... I can't even remember all their names. But they must be remembered. They cannot fade away, faceless and forgotten. The Institute was run with military precision. Every child measured. Every name recorded. Every death logged with meticulous care. Sid, allow me to travel to Ash and recover the registry so that my brothers and sisters might live on. You are a good friend, Herman. But the fact remains that Ash is simply too dangerous. Sid, please. Even should it cost me my life. Too dangerous for you, Herman. But not for me. I'll go to Bad Back and find the registry. You will? I won't let you risk your life. I don't know how to thank you. You can start by telling me where I'll find this orphanage. The De Grace. Hidden in a forest. Overlooking the plains. All right. I'll see what I can find there. May the mothers guide you. The plains of Vida Grace have haunted my dreams since I escaped from the orphanage. I can't say I was looking forward to returning. Do you suppose it's magic keeping the thing afloat? What else could it be? So there's one a moment you think I'll you've freed the realm from her fate. The next, a darker one rears up to replace it. Now what awaits us when we finally attain release? True freedom? Or something else entirely? Guys, you aren't trying to give the Enterprise wings, are you? What else would I be doing? The children seem to think you're avoiding them. They're worried about you. Is this really so important that you need to shut yourself away from everyone? The Enterprise is already the fastest ship in the realm, and that's with the sea beneath her. But what if she weren't bound to the waves? What if she weren't bound to anything at all? It's not fair, the gods get the skies all to themselves, so... I'm gonna do something about it. The Fallen had their chance, but they relied too much on magic. And see where that got them. But not me. I've discovered how to do it without. Well, almost. First, I need to make a prototype. And is that a one woman job? Are you volunteering? I'll have you know the Enterprise is my baby. But if her godfather's offering to lend a hand, I'd be happy to take it. First, I'll need oil, and not just some old drippings from Miss Molly's spits in the tub and crown. Refined stuff, like they make in Ordill. Then I'll need some bone, or shell. Light, strong, preferably no longer attached to the beast it belongs to. If it's beast bones are after, I'm sure the curse breakers will know where you might find some. No, they'll know where you might find some. You're the one who offered to help, remember? I should speak with one of the curse breakers before I set off for Old Hill. See if I can't find this bone while I'm there as well. They make an oil down at the docks in Old Hill that's as slippery as the sea nasties they render it from. With that and the bone I told you about, I should be able to finish the prototype. Has 
Mitterdahl mentioned a new project. <sighs> All this time, my heart. Empty shell is like an empty heart. It must first be filled to bring one joy. Feeling ill? And no sooner have your wounds mended. <sighs> While I may not have Gav's nose. That's what I'm worried about. I do. What I truly like... ...but teach her medicine. Don't push yourself too hard, Clive. I use tea, stop the fits. Oh, I only hope they stay stopped. Is there aught I might assist you with? My lord. I am. I do not doubt it. Thank you, Yote. May you return safely. Have care, my lord. Thank you, my lord, for taking me in. Everyone here has been so kind. It reminds me of home. You look at the list, do you? Anything catch your eye? Think you can help? <laughs> 